Odds of tropical development in the Caribbean rising as we can see the final hurricane of the 2025 hurricane season. Welcome in, folks. Happy Thursday, October 16th. And uh, yeah, we're tracking the tropics today. We've got the system I've been telling you about for maybe not quite a week, but at least a couple of days now and the potential for it to maybe be the last hurrah of the season. I've been telling you the Caribbean's a ticking time bomb and uh, some of those ingredients look like they're starting to line up for that potential uh, that we could get a named storm, maybe the last one of the season. And this one's got a pretty high ceiling as well on uh, how strong it could get. So we'll be talking about that uh, in today's video. Also breaking down this system crossing the lower 48 that's going to bring some gusty winds and severe weather. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date and always in the loop here about the latest data I've got. It's free for both of us. Uh, it's not going to cost me anything if you subscribe, and it's definitely not going to cost you anything. It's nice and free. So uh, might as well just go ahead and do it and help both of us out. All right, let's go ahead and dive on into the data here. We'll start with just the latest run of our American model it has kind of been... Uh, the one that picked up on this first and uh, a lot of model data kind of coming around to the idea now that uh, yeah you can see right here into the Caribbean you'll notice we start to get low pressure to begin to develop by about a week or so from now becomes a named storm and then on this run at least pulls it up and uh, kind of towards Puerto Rico other models pull it towards the Gulf others pull it up towards the East Coast so a lot to figure out here but uh, just one of the models here that's showing that potential of this storm to develop. Now, where even is this thing right now is probably what you're wondering. Well, it's uh, out here into the main development region of the Atlantic all on its own and uh, definitely not very organized right now, but has plenty of convection and is holding on. So that was one of the things that I also told you that needs to happen is this needs to survive the main development region and actually get into the Caribbean to have a chance to develop into something. And so far, so good. Uh, it is definitely holding its own and, uh, you know, keeping going and keeping that consistent convection, although not necessarily much more organized than it has been. Now, there is a lot of dry air nearby, especially to the north of the storm. You can see this big tongue of dry air, uh, and even out in front of it, it's going to have some drier air to deal with. But you've kind of got this leading bit of the ITCZ that uh, is kind of moistening things up out in front of our main system. So, uh, like I said, I think this one doing just fine on keeping a, a steady go ahead here. And it uh, looks like it's got a pretty well defined marsupial pouch, just meaning that, yeah, it's got that tight area of higher end water vapor, higher end precipitation, kind of protecting it from some of the harsher outside element. So that's what the storm looks like right now. Uh, again, not really a storm, still an open wave, but potentially on its way to a storm. Let's go ahead and take a look at some model data and kind of dive into when that could happen and what it could look like. We'll start with that American model, the one I showed you at the beginning, and uh, just kind of zoom this through time. Now, no models currently are developing this before the Antilles or b uh, before really anywhere into the Caribbean. So that's good news uh, for you know the uh, the beginning islands here, but they are developing it once it hits the Caribbean. We kind of talked about that the past couple of days, how that might end up being the case. Here you go, though. You can see that area of spin start getting into the Caribbean by about a week from now, a little less than that, probably more like five to seven days. Uh, gets, uh, you know, just south of Hispaniola, then takes its time a bit, but starts to spin up. And we've got a tropical storm by uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. So, you know, about seven to 10 days from now uh, and uh, starts to develop, becomes strong and then slams into Hispaniola as a pretty strong tropical system here uh, within the 10 day range and then pulls up near the Bahamas and out to sea. That's the, uh, the GFS model. What about some other data? Here's the European. What does it show? Well, uh, same thing. Doesn't form it in uh, the next seven days or so. Gets the energy into the Caribbean by the start of this coming week. So uh, Monday, Tuesday time frame. You can see the general spin here. But remember, it's still pretty disorganized. So it needs time to get its act together. And once it gets to the Caribbean and hits a more favorable environment, which I'll show you why it's more favorable here in a moment, uh, it starts to slowly spin up and uh, eventually does get to name storm status right around 10 days from now. So remember, not this weekend, but next weekend is when that would be. And uh, then uh, just uh, keeps on spinning away, becomes a tropical storm, becomes a hurricane, slams into Cuba instead, well out in a time. We're talking a fit, 10 to 15 days out, and that's as far as the model run goes, folks, as uh, you can see it ending here with this system out near the Bahamas. So ways away, but the European does also form this system. I'll show you a couple other models. Here's the Canadian model. What does it show? Well, 
uh, gets this system into the Caribbean. And the Canadian has been trying to form it a little bit earlier, but it keeps trending closer to the other models. So I'm not really buying this so much that it forms right before the islands. Even if it did, it would not be very strong. Um, but the Canadian does form it sooner, then gets it to the Caribbean, starts to strengthen it into a stronger tropical storm by early this coming week. So much quicker evolution on the Canadian model. And uh, then uh, you know gets up towards Hispaniola, Jamaica, and kind of falls apart a little bit. Let me show you one more model, and uh, that would be the Euro AI. And uh, you can see this model um, has been one that has picked up on some things a little bit better than other models this season, so maybe it does a little bit better. And this is a Fortisney map, I'll say. Obviously, it looks different. This one not showing rainfall, it's showing spin. So the brighter orange and pink and purple colors you see, the more spin there is, uh, more indicative of a low-pressure system. Here's the system. This is by Monday and Tuesday of this coming week. So it's there. It's got the spin uh, south of Jamaica at that time frame, but keeps going much further west into the Caribbean towards Central America and kind of runs into land a little bit before it ever really forms into a system. Now, that has a probability of happening. We have this thing called the beta effect. Uh, basically, what that means is systems just like to go further uh, westbound than a lot of the models like to pick up on. So maybe the AI model is seeing that, keeps it going further, and gets this closer to Central America. Um, but uh, maybe it's overdoing it a little bit. Maybe it gets a little bit uh, further west and north right around uh, this area of the Caribbean and then forms into something and hooks north. Obviously, that would be a bigger deal for the United States. So... A lot of options still on the table, but let's take a look at the general environment here, and I'll show you what is more favorable about the Caribbean compared to other parts of the world, and as to why this storm may have a higher chance of developing and could become quite strong. Here's the first thing. We've got a pretty good signal that there's going to be a lot of moisture in the Caribbean as this system gets here. These are our precipitable water anomalies. So basically, is there more water in the atmosphere than usual, aka is it more humid, you know, so on and so forth. Things that would be favorable for a tropical system. The European Ensemble is showing that. Now you can see we've got dry air to the north over the next couple of days near the Bahamas, but then the Caribbean gets very green as this system gets there. It really moistens things up. And uh, here we go. About a week from now, yeah, there's plenty of moisture out here. It's kind of the key takeaway from this map. A lot of green from Central America all the way towards uh, about the same longitude as, or so as Puerto Rico. Um, so it's plenty moist. I don't, I don't think that'll be a problem at all here into this part of the world by the time the system gets here. In fact, uh, the system will help to moisten it up even more. What about upper level winds? Well, uh, you know, this is where the timing becomes a little more interesting, but right around here early next week, there are signs that, again, we get one of these upper level cyclones, anti-cyclones, I should say, and we talk about this a lot in the channel. It's an area of basically diverging winds in the upper levels, and that can often help to form a system, uh, especially whenever you have these already more moist environments. Uh, remember, what happens is this creates that divergence, that creates a bit of a void in the atmosphere. A void's got to get filled somehow, so winds at the surface converge together, they rise to fill that void, and just about any time you have rising motion in the atmosphere, that's synonymous with low pressure, low pressure synonymous with hurricanes, you get the point here, it's helpful to a hurricane and its chances of developing. So we've got that ingredient as well. But by far the most important thing here that, again, I've been screaming for what oh, feels like a month plus now is the water out here is just absolute bathtub water, not only at the surface of the ocean, but well down. So this creates a lot of potential uh, energy for a system or a hurricane to take advantage of to kind of suck out of the ocean. And what happens is it takes this energy, it forms it into rain, and that rain, the process of creating that, it, it uh, creates latent heat release that warms up the environment more, that lowers the pressure more. It's a positive feedback loop from there for these hurricanes to form. And the Caribbean is notorious for being the area that if you can get low wind shear and plenty of moisture like some of the models are suggesting. The sky is the limit in terms of what could uh, happen. Now, does that mean we're going to get this major Category 5? No, it doesn't. There's a lot of things to figure out till then. We don't even know if the thing's going to form. But if we get a well-defined system and the environment plays nice with it, uh, really the sky is the limit in terms of potential intensity. With that said, let's take a look at some ensemble data now, and I'll show you uh, where this could end up going and how strong it could get. Here are the European Ensemble members through the next 10 days, and you can see, yeah, there's definitely a signal. Now, one thing I think is uh, important to note on the European Ensembles, it kind of aligns more with the Euro AI, is there's a big cluster closer to Central America. So a lot of models kind of hold off on development initially, wait till it gets out here into Central America, then form it. Then you see another camp, I'll circle right here, which is more in line with the GFS and the uh, Canadian that forms it a little bit sooner into the Caribbean, gets it more towards Jamaica and Hispaniola, then starts to pull it north. Now, 
I think if we get a scenario like this where it forms much quicker and then pulls north, it's more likely that this misses the United States outside of Puerto Rico. Um, so it misses the lower 48. If we get something a little bit more like this, notice it forms later. It starts to pull north and wants to get more towards the Gulf. So that would be maybe a bigger deal for places like um, Western Cuba, the Gulf states of the United States and Mexico here. So, um, you know, that's something to keep in mind here with the tracks. What about the GFS ensembles? We're starting to see the same thing in these ensembles as well. You've got kind of two camps. You've got one camp that says this forms quickly, pulls on up. And then you've got another camp that I would say is a growing camp, becoming a more likely scenario is this waits till Central America, then pulls north. And remember, this would be a bigger problem for the lower 48, as uh, obviously it would have more of a Florida path potentially than uh, a Bahama or her Hispaniola and then out to sea path from there. Uh, that's what the two operational model ensembles are saying. What about the AI models? Kind of the same thing. Now, not as much noise here, but you notice a lot more members have a Central America storm. In fact, many of them pull it right into Central America. This would not be a United States problem at all, although a couple try to wiggle it north. Something to note, though, with the AI models is notice the intensity in millibars. We've got a 917 millibar, a 941, another 941. We've got a 947, a 914. Most of the ones that do develop this storm, I mean, they blow it up into a very strong hurricane. So that is something to keep in mind. Like I said, the sky's the limit. If the atmosphere plays nice here, uh, the Caribbean could support the strongest storm uh, out of anywhere, basically on the planet, almost outside of maybe portions of the Pacific. So that's why it's so important to keep a very close eye on this forecast. But remember, one, it still might not even develop. The National Hurricane Center hasn't even tagged it yet, so plenty of time to go. Uh, you know, that, that's the key takeaway right now. Don't even know if it'll develop, but if it does, got to keep a very close eye on this one. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on back home now. Remember, we've got a big storm forming. We're going to see some gusty winds and some severe weather as well. Here's the latest on that. Current look at satellite shows that storm system uh, continuing here. This is the one that impacted California, uh, started down near L.A. a day or two ago, now pulling up through the Rockies and eventually going to get on through the Dakotas today and into tomorrow, then up into Canada. After that, we're actually going to get a secondary piece of energy to dive down. You can already see it well up here into Canada. That one's going to pull down, and that's actually going to be the big storyline, I think, uh, for areas east of the Rockies. That's where we're going to see potential severe weather from that one. I think some gusty winds as well up into the Great Lakes. I'll show you how gusty here in a moment, and then a shot of cooler air. Uh, maybe the first really crisp fall air of the year. We've already had some crisper shots, but uh, maybe the first frost of the season for a lot of folks out of that one. Uh, in terms of radar right now, what does it look like out there? Well, you can see yeah, we've got some rain up here into uh, the northern plains thanks to that system anywhere from Iowa through Minnesota, the Dakotas, uh, and then into eastern Montana and Wyoming, even portions of Nebraska getting in on that rain today. Elsewhere on the map, pretty dry, so that's really the only current event going on uh, is that system continuing to spin away. Uh, but let's go ahead and time it out for you and how it's going to unfold. You can see that big piece of energy. This is the one causing our current storm up here. Uh, we've got a lot of difluence out in front of this one. That's going to help to create surface low pressure into the Dakotas today, helping to fuel this rainfall ongoing that I just showed you on the last map. Uh, if we keep going ahead into time, that spins away. And then notice we kind of get a new setup. We get a bit of a subtropical piece of energy down near New Mexico. This is by overnight tomorrow. Then you get another trough up north. They're going to combine together here and form a pretty good good storm over the central part of the country. Here we go by Saturday afternoon. Notice uh, you get this trough to kind of connect into one, some phasing of energy and uh, a lot of difluence out in front of that, likely going to produce some pretty good severe weather um, here for your coming Saturday and then tries to swing on east, continues to get strong. Surface low pressure going to keep deepening. Maybe severe weather threat lingers into Sunday. We'll show you that in a second and then pulls on up into the northeast is a big storm and uh, then another big storm right behind that one, at least in the middle levels works on through and uh, it's, a, it's a very busy week or so of mid-latitude cyclones. All right, let's show uh, you what it might look like at the surface and then also give you a look at that severe weather threat, uh, that gusty wind threat, and then how temperatures are going to change behind these storms. Here's today's storm. You can see it quite well over the Dakotas uh, beginning to develop, bringing that rain. Could even see a little bit of severe weather on the southern end out of this. Would not surprise me, so uh, keep that in mind. But that one pulls up into Canada pretty quickly. Remember, that's not the main show. 
Here comes the main show beginning to develop. Notice how convection explodes uh, here by Saturday afternoon over the Ozarks, over much of Arkansas, uh, down even into the Texarkana area. That's where severe weather could be a concern. This is as that surface low is really beginning to become more ripe and deep and then really gets quite strong. We're talking about low 990 millibar low here right over Michigan. Uh, by the time we get on into overnight Saturday into Sunday, a line of heavy storms, maybe some severe stretching well south from this system. Uh, and uh, then you can see cold air funneling in behind it. But it's going to be the a pretty good mid-latitude cyclone that passes the East Coast. Like I said, going to bring very gusty winds to the Great Lakes, could bring severe weather even Sunday into potentially areas of the southeast and mid-Atlantic. I'll show you that here in a moment. Keeps on developing, a new piece of energy takes over, strong storm working right through Pennsylvania, heavy rain, gusty winds here by Sunday overnight into Monday on the European model, and then we get a secondary storm that once again just explodes in intensity all the way down into the 990 range once again over Michigan by early next week, and that brings another shot of colder air, and then that one phases up the coast, and yeah, it's a bit of a complicated forecast, but just no storminess going to be returning by the time we get into this weekend and into early next Next week for many of us. What about those winds? Well, this is what it could look like. Uh, pretty gusty today over the plains, but right here is when things really start to get gusty. This is storm number one uh, from Sunday into Monday, and these are max wind gusts, so this is not a constant wind. These are as strong as the winds will get, but still, uh, right off the Great Lakes here, you know, tropical storm winds, 45 mile an hour would not surprise me. The Windy City going to be pretty windy out of this one. You can just see, in general, 30 to 40 mile an hour gust here for many of us. The high country of uh, the Appalachia chain going to get some higher gusts as well out of this one. This is round one of wind then we get a secondary round of wind check this one out like i said this one almost bombs out a little bit uh, we're talking wind gusts near 50 miles an hour along the um, uh, western shores here of michigan up near chicago milwaukee very gusty winds into ohio 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts uh, very breezy conditions and then i think behind it once again the high country get blasted with some stronger winds and uh, this even tries to pull on up into the northeast so not a crazy major nor'east or anything, but do not let the wind surprise you. It's going to be quite gusty with this system as it works on through for many of us. And remember, it's kind of a one-two punch. You get the first one this weekend, then you get a second one early next week. Uh, just a stormy pattern in general. All right, uh, let's take a look at the severe weather threat now, and I'll show you how that could unfold over the next couple of days. Tomorrow's severe weather threat for Friday, not very high. It is there, though. We've got a marginal risk. This is a level one out of five for Oklahoma City, up towards Wichita, Kansas City, Topeka, uh, Tulsa, and all points in between. Uh, the tornado threat for tomorrow is uh, pretty small. You can see not very high. The hail threat, yeah, it's there. And the wind threat there as well. It's just not a very high threat tomorrow. But a couple isolated severe storms absolutely could form in that shaded area. I think it's by Saturday things become uh, a little bit more problematic. We've now up to a level two out of five, a slight risk. Risk there in yellow that includes the Ozarks and really the entire state of Arkansas. I would even throw Memphis into this uh, extreme northern Louisiana, Texarkana, uh, extreme southeastern Oklahoma. You could see severe weather on Saturday, and even in that uh, darker green area from uh, even uh, the I-10 quarter of Louisiana all the way up towards uh, Indianapolis and uh, the Fort Bend area uh, could see severe weather. So. Not expecting a big outbreak or anything, but keep in mind, it's going to be something we need to keep a close eye on. The main driver of this, we've got plenty of wind shear. That's not going to be a limiting factor. The bigger thing is, do we get instability? It's October after all, so it takes a little bit more to get instability compared to the springtime months. This is the chance of getting at least, we'll call it enough instability for some severe weather. Pretty high, you know, for your Saturday as we start getting up into this region of uh, Arkansas, Missouri, and basically the areas that were shaded in. That's why they have a higher end chance. Smaller end chances all the way up into Indiana, but remember, we've got so much wind shear, any small amount of uh, convective available potential energy or cape here or storm fuel, uh, you know, could cause some concerns. What about Sunday? Well, by Sunday, we keep on going, and a little slimmer of instability tries to stretch up into the Carolinas. We'll see if it happens. Uh, you know, I'm a little skeptical we get enough for anything major, but maybe a couple severe storms, especially where you have these brighter colors. It's where we'll have more instability. Uh, the further north you go, the more wind shear you have. So maybe somewhere in between, maybe in upstate South Carolina, North Georgia, could have a bit of a heightened severe weather risk for Sunday. Uncertainty is just too high right now to exactly pinpoint where. But if instability trends northward, there will be severe weather on Sunday. I'll tell you right now, we've got plenty of wind shear. The question is just instability, which is basically what always ends up being around this part of the world. So we'll keep that in mind. What about temperatures? Well, 
you know, I do think we're going to get some good shots of cooler air. We've already got one shot of cooler air into the east right now. We've got a bit of a October heat wave in the central part of the country. After storm number one, we get a shot of cooler air. By Monday, you can see those blue temperatures into the east. And then another shot of cooler air after the second system. And by about a week from now, we're full-blown fall weather. Highs stuck into the 50s and 60s probably for a lot of us. Uh, you know, 60s further south, 50s further north. But uh, a, a good shot there of that nicer fall-like weather here to end out October and tries to hold on all the way through Halloween. We'll see if it can, but either way, I think a bit of a temperature roller coaster for many of us. All right, folks, well, that's all I've got for you on this Thursday. Hopefully you enjoy the video, and uh, obviously I'll be back with another video tomorrow. Really got my eyes on the tropics, but do not sleep on these mid-latitude cyclones. They're going to bring some impactful weather for many of us, I'd say, over the next week or so. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe, and I'll see you all next time.